In late 2012, TopWorks released its second generation of Foundation field bus devices. The new unit meets the latest field bus standards and has multiple new and improved features, including go switches and or a potentiometer for position sensing, function blocks that operate up to four times faster than before, link active scheduler capability, new monitoring features including an adjustable cycle counter, time in position, and time to open and close counters. This new unit can also perform live downloads for upgrades so the process never has to stop. And it also has field diagnostics for quicker and easier troubleshooting. This video series provides an operability overview including commissioning, calibration, and this device's interface with Delta V and AMS. commissioning device. In Delta V Explorer, find your controller and then select the I.O. section of that controller and go down to your H1 card. In our case, the H1 card is card 5. I've terminated our device on port 1, so we'll look in port 1 under decommission field bus devices. Here you should see your device and it should be in standby. If it's not in standby, go ahead and place it in standby. Once in standby, you can drag and drop the device to your port, in this case, port 1. A, um, a tag properties window will pop up. Um, change what you see fit and go ahead and select OK. A, a wizard window pops up um, letting you know that if you have a placeholder set up you can go ahead and commission this in that placeholder just by dragging and dropping to that pre-configured placeholder or you can do what we're doing and starting a whole new device with a new placeholder by just dragging and dropping to the port. So we'll go ahead and select finish. And now we'll wait until the device is commissioned. Now that our device is commissioned, we can see it on the port. We'll go ahead and download this port. And this will download our new device as well, uh, as we've got selected here. Be careful if you've already got other devices on this port that you don't re-download anything uh, that is running or doesn't need to be downloaded. Now I'll update the download status, and that concludes the commissioning. To calibrate the device, there are a few different methods. You can do it locally with the button board by removing the lid to the device. You can do it with an Emerson 375 or 475 handheld, or you can also do it through AMS in Delta V. To start off in AMS, right click on your commission device and select Open with AMS Device Manager. Select the unit from the list. And click Device Setup. The first thing the unit's going to do is place the resource and the transducer block out of service. Click next to confirm this out of service mode. Next question, 
It's asking you if you want to flash the LEDs. Uh, if you were setting up multiple devices uh, that were all look the same, you could flash LEDs to confirm uh, which one you were actually dealing with. In this case, since we're only working on one, we'll select No and click Next. Also, you may notice your status has gone from good to bad, and the device is prompting you for a function check. Uh, both those are functions of being out of service, so don't worry about those right now. It asks you if you want to begin the semi-auto device calibration. We'll select Next. <clears throat> now it's saying adjust the target magnet for the go switches um, to one of the current to its current position. Right now my device is closed, so I'll select close and hit next. It asks me do I want to reverse the valve to the other position? I'll select yes. And it should stroke it to the other limit. At this point if your target magnet is an over top of the open switch, adjust the target magnet. Once you've got it adjusted, in this case we'll select open and we'll click next. It's telling me the calibration has finished successfully and the sensor type is go switches only. The device can sense what sensors it has terminated on it, whether a potentiometer or switches. Um, and it does this on the first calibration of the device and stores that data. If for whatever reason you hook up more sensors down the road, you'll need to perform a factory restore, terminate devices, and then recalibrate. Now it's asking us if we want to enable the button board for local operation. I'll select yes. Once again, this just a reminder, this will, will only enable the button board for use uh, when the resource and transducer block are out of service. This way no one can pop the lid in the field and um, change settings in the device. We'll hit next. This next window is shutdown configuration. Inside the sealed cube, there are two circuit boards, a sensor board and a foundation field bus board. And they are linked by a uh, physical connection. Um, if the cube senses any um, fault in the integrity of this connection, either electrically or physically, it will enter into this shutdown mode if it's enabled. Um, and this is how you can tell the cube how you'd like to perform uh, either open or close if it reaches this catastrophic state. Um, you can also program in a delay and uh, you can also program in a reset on it as well. So once you get it set how you like um, or if not at all go ahead and click next. Here are your limits for your cycle counts. Uh, you've got an adjustable and non-adjustable cycle counter. There's time and position limits. Um, and there's also travel limits as well, travel time limits. These, uh, there's averages of these times too. Once you've got those, select next. Here you can enter a serial number. Um, if you'd like to assign a serial number uh, to this cube, you can enter the location for where it was calibrated or where it's being used, a date and time, and who it was performed by. Finally, once everything's completed, it will return both your resource and your transducer block to service. And we can select Finish. calibrate locally, i.e. not over delta V or with a handheld, move the actuator to the closed position and press the set key. 
Once you've confirmed that the target magnet is in place and over top of the closed switch, confirm with the same button. Now if your transducer block is out of service, you can reverse the valve position. Once you've moved to the open side of the actuator, confirm that your open magnet is in over top of the open switch. Once again hit set to blinking, the magnet's in place, and now confirm. You'll notice that the status light has changed from a flash to now a solid light. This is letting us know that it is indeed calibrated. To restore factory defaults locally, remove power from the cube. Now, before restoring power to the cube, press and hold the set confirm button for both the open and closed side. and then release once powering up. Now you can confirm that you've restored to factory defaults as the status light is now flashing, indicating that a calibration is needed. Once you've placed the resource and the transducer block out of service, you can reverse the valve with the button board. You'll notice the LEDs for the close and the open illuminate when that switch is made. You can manually override your integral solenoid by finding the small button on the back of the piezo. Using a screwdriver, press and hold this override. Once you release the override, you will return to normal status. The device is commissioned. You can stroke the, your valve between open and close through AMS. To do that, right click on your device, select configure, now select manual setup. Click the button Change Trigger Points. Now first it's going to put your device out of service, both the transducer and the resource block. So you can go ahead and click Next. <clears throat> now towards the bottom you will see a window labeled reverse valve. Select reverse and hit apply. And it should reduce, uh, reverse your valve. If it's closed, it'll move to open, and open, it'll move to close. And this is how you can stroke between open and close via AMS.